I'm Margaret from Sewing Machine Warehouse in Penrith, Australia and today I'm going to show you how to make a jam jar cover. Okay, so this requires um, just a piece of fabric. You don't have to cut them in a circle but these are all left over from um, casserole carriers that I make. Okay, so I don't want to waste them. So I make my own jam and marmalade and also lemon butter and if you give them for gifts they look quite nice if you um, put a little cover on them so now the setup for this is explained in my circular sewing video so if you watch that first you'll understand why I've got this set up here what you need to do now is take your fabric and like I said it doesn't have to be cut into a circle because you will, you will uh, sew a circle and then you can cut it easily so find the middle of your circle and you'll also need a scrap of tear away or um, stitching paper something that will stabilize a single layer of fabric and then you can tear that away later okay now once I've established where my middle is which is right there okay now I need to place it under my machine my machine foot and just work out the diameter or the radius I beg your pardon and I will stab the book with my map pin and that will give me the center and therefore I can successfully stitch my circle all the way around and get a perfect circle okay now I've chosen a scallop stitch and for these machines with a really large scallop just flatten it out a little bit so I've got a five millimeter width and a 16 millimeter length so that I haven't got too many scallops to cut around and I've also changed my needle because I'm using embroidery thread um, I've changed it to the gold one which is a titanium needle and I've chosen because I'm only sewing through one layer of fabric basically I've chosen a 75 when I was stitching through um, the wadding and several layers of fabric I chose a, th a thicker one so this is a 90 um, 14 is the imperial size so have those on hand when you're using um, decorative thread, rayon thread, um, it works perfectly on and also it reduces the shredding that might happen if you've got your regular needle in. Okay. So I've lowered my tension because we're going to see the underneath and I have a red thread bobbin, threaded bobbin in underneath. So just a matching thread. Now this is quite quick. And as you can see, it turns by itself. So, like a record on a record player, if anybody remembers that era, um, this becomes your turntable. Your needle here is playing. And this is your pivot point. <laughs> there you go, look at that. It looks fabulous. So this one will go on my strawberry jam. You could try... You could make chilli jam. That could go well with that. Lemon butter. Etc, etc. Or if you just if you just like pretty colours, Christmas time you can do a tartan one. So these are just scraps of fabric that I have left over. These are lovely. Okay, so don't waste your fabric. You've got a good idea here to use them. Use them up. Now we might just stop 
and I'll finish the rest. Okay, so we've come to within three centimeters of our finishing point. Okay, now I've worked out that three scallops takes about, where are you? A little more than three and a half centimeters, not quite four. Okay, so when I've got three centimeters left, I'm not going to fit three more scallops in. Okay, so there's my needle and I've completed a scallop there and this is the start of another one. So I don't have three and a half centimetres, so I'm actually going to shrink the last three scallops by two millimetres for each one. So that should take away that gap I have. Okay, so let's have a look and see how we go. Now, if you're only going to reduce it by two millimetres, it won't be as noticeable. Okay, let me just take my single pattern off. And just watch. And you might have to just fudge it a little bit. And just, yeah, I'm going to join it up with the other one. There we go. And then finish off in that spot there. Okay. Now I'll just trim that one off. Let's see, we got three scallops in. I know they're a little shorter, but it was better than finish on, finishing on a half one. Okay, so what we need to do now, I'm just going to trim that off and that thread there. I'm just going to show you how to cut away your scallops. All right. Now you might want to tear the tear away away. Now always put your finger at the back and support your stitching and pull away from your stitching, not over your stitching, okay? So just do that. Now you can use these scraps again on other things, so I don't ever throw my tearaway scraps away. And also I use it to um, test my stitches, okay? And then let's just take, take this away. Try to leave that hole if you can. Like I said, always support your stitching and pull away. Oops. Okay, so there we go there. Now, I use a product called Fray Stopper. Okay, what this does, it's excellent for edges where you think they might fray with washing and wearing. Um, I also use it to paint the ends of ribbon. So if I make garments with ribbons on them, I paint a little bit of this liquid on the edge, let it dry and you won't get those continual fraying uh, threads off your ribbons. Okay, so now be careful with this stuff because it will stick to all the plastic. I'm going to, just going to use this. But what you do is you paint the edge behind your stitching. Okay, so the part that I'm actually going to cut off if you paint that it'll bleed into the stitch and then it will secure all the ends when I cut it away and stop it from that this kind of like continual frayed edge and it gives it a nice finish you don't have to use quite as much you can just run that along there now what you do with this I'll paint the whole lot and obviously um, let it dry for about five minutes 
Okay, so I won't paint the whole lot, but I do want to show you how to trim this away. Now, you can get yourself some curve tip scissors like these, just little embroidery scissors. This, these are quite good because they've got big handles. Um, and they're from Japan. They're called uh, Soft Canary is the brand. But what you do... Is just trim away your fabric like this and you can sit sit and have a cup of tea in the afternoon or when you're watching telly I usually just cut these away when I'm sitting down doing nothing now you can do this on lots of things I've done little girls dresses the sleeves um, of dresses yeah. facings collars and you can just trim now obviously don't cut right up to your stitching you don't want to tr cut that um, and when you've got the fray stopper on there you can have a little bit of extra fabric there and it won't fray because you've sealed the edges but that gives it a nice finish Okay, and then all you do, and I'll just use the one that I've got here, is put your cover on, have a rubber, rubber band handy, place that on, and that will secure the, the cover so that you can then, you might have to fiddle with it a little bit because obviously these are quite big jars. Okay, there we go. And just get that so that it's even. And when you've done that, have some ribbon handy. And just tie that, and then you can remove the elastic if you want. And that makes a nice gift. I also do it with um, jars of lollies. There you go. So give that a try. That's a quick and easy method um, for making those circles on scraps of fabric. And then you can move to doing bigger items like cushions and placemats uh, when you get more confident. Okay? So, hope you enjoyed that. Happy sewing!